Hey, 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 my name is Polishlinks and welcome to Trick and Treat Visual Novel. Uh, so the title suggests that I should be recording and playing it and uploading it on Halloween, but well, that didn't work out somehow and basically we are going to... We are going to... To play it now, basically. Alright, uh, let's not waste time and go with it. The sound of our steps, combined with that of the occasional nocturnal animal, is the only thing we can hear. It's terribly dark in this place. The dense vegetation makes it impossible to see the sky or light from the moon. Our flashlights are the only things that light up our way. At times like this one begs to not run out of battery. We walk without knowing what we are really looking for or better said for no reason. Then how about you use only one flashlight at the moment? One will run out and you get the other one. <laughs> okay. We are just a group of boys bored with our lives. Trying to create a lasting memory in this night, instead of just staying home doing nothing. Like Polish Lynx is doing right now. Kind of. Today is October 31st. January 9th. All Hollows Eve, better known as Halloween. Three young men walk through the dark, but up until now nothing special. Forest, me being one of them. We are doing it to prove our courage. It's too bad there isn't a girl here to see how brave we are. <laughs> Seems like that, one could say this is a meaningless effort. For a moment I stop to look at my watch. It's 1.39 am. Exactly 12 a.m. here for me. That means we have been walking aimlessly for more than two hours now. Oh. That also means I'm awake for two hours, actually. I'm sure that when people will find a place like this terrifying. No, not really. But once you get used to it, the fear disappears make you feel like normal. What makes us afraid of the dark is that we cannot know what hides in it, what lurks in the shadows. But this is clearly an empty darkness. At that moment I sigh, feeling how tired my legs are. Same. Kind of. What is the point of being here? Clearly we had already demonstrated what we wanted. It would be best to return, I should tell them. I don't know why a part of the a part of the uh, recording software I use appears uh, you know left bottom corner of the game if it's if they in the top right corner of my screen but it's there when the text box appears whatever I was about to speak when suddenly the atmosphere in the forest became becomes strange Suddenly a ch cold chill runs through my body. It was like another chill except it was not going away. For no reason the air's temperature dropped from one second to the other. So much so, my breath becomes visible turning into mist. It doesn't end there. The air is now filled with a rotten spell just a little short from being unbearable. Images warms and flies soon appear in my mind, giving me a really unpleasant feeling. We all stop at that moment. What's happening? I ask on... Okay, that was weird. What's happening? I ask confused one turning to look at my friends. So we are Axel, okay. By the expression on their faces, it was easy to know that they were just as lost as I was. It was then that we heard footsteps nearby that did not come from any of us. We all got dead quiet after that. 
I don't know if it was out of fear or to check if it was not a mistake, but we stayed motionless, like statues without making a noise. Just looking at each other's faces, wondering the same thing. What? What? What was happening? As if I could know. We heard the steps again, they clearly belong to a human. Or at least to a large animal. But there is something strange about them. It sounds as if the person walked dragging one foot. Just thinking about it made me shiver. Well, technically that would mean it's possible to run away easier. For you. <laughs> Damn! Why is this happening? It makes no sense! We should have turned home before, but now it's too late to regret it. I have the feeling that we are being stalked by someone. The strange footsteps stop, but I'm still feeling the presence nearby. I don't know where it is, but I know that it's looking at me. That cursed thing is looking at me. My heart is beating anxiously. It's almost as if my body was telling me to get out of there. But strangely, my friend seemed unable to perceive it. It seems that it's gone. It must have been just an animal. Or so we thought. Said one of them, convinced that we were safe. I would like to believe that too. <laughs> we had a sigh of relief. However, bad luck would soon strike us again. Unexpectedly, the forest becomes darker than before in just the blink of an eye. But that wasn't the fault of the forest, but of our flashlights, which went out. Told you to use one, not all of them. God damn. Okay, so there were three people, I believe. And all of them had to use the flashlights, right? So let's go. assume that all three of them had flashlights. One flashlight lasts for two hours. Uh, it was October. Okay, it might... Well, it might not get... No, it... Okay, 1 a.m. Okay, that's middle of the night. And they were there for two hours or something like that. So, let's say you are started at 11 p.m. Okay, it was already kinda dark. So, one flashlight lasted for like two hours. Three flashlights would last for six hours so until 5 a.m. it would be possible that at 5 a.m. you would have sun already there at least a bit of it why would you use all the flashlights at the same time god damn it all right of the three only one mine was still working what's going on did the battery die no you just turned off the flashlight yourself for sure Ask one of them scared, while they both beat them desperately as if that was going to revive them. I can blame them. The idea of walking in the darkness was not pleasant for anyone. Well, there are there are those uh, flashlights, I believe, that if you shake them a bit, they start, you know, working again, right? I think there's such an option for something. You shake and it works again. And the char charging by shaking, right? Or, or am I just m making it up? Anyway, about after a few months, we had no choice but to resign ourselves to that. Once more, the sound of our footsteps is heard. But the silence is different now. We are not quite because we have nothing to say, but because we are afraid. We can't be walking despite the fear that invades us. Visibility is almost zero, but we have no choice. In theory, we were walking back looking for the exit, but I cannot remember anything of this forest. That's why you leave signs! Like, you know, scrap of materials on the tree and such. Ah, we could be walking the circles, and I would never notice it until it is too late. I had the thought of it, I just want to get out of here. What was that? Suddenly my thoughts are silenced. 
We hear the footsteps of someone or something. Once more, the trio has become statues waiting in the presence to go. I hold my breath while feeling my heart beating anxiously. Damn! I mean, damn! Get away from here and leave us alone! Unexpectedly, the steps are he heard closer. This time, they do not disappear but rather come at us. I can't stand it. Desperately, I move my flesh to where we're looking for the author of those footsteps. You hear them. How can you not locate where it comes from? Hoping for the light to reveal their identity and raise our fears. Nothing. 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 Is that all there is around here? Just empty air? My anxiety goes with it. Failed at end. I refuse to believe that it was a ghost. Suddenly, when I move the flashlight again, I see a silhouette. I could not distinguish what it was, but for a moment the light revealed something. I see nothing here. Quickly I point to the same place and discover it was gone. I hold my breath anxiously. It was not an illusion, I am sure that I saw something. It was then that I hear something nearby. Without even thinking I aim the light towards that place. What I found leaves us paralyzed with an expression of disbelief on our faces. It is a white cat with eyes of an intense red which stands before us. Her look is not the friendliest to say something. Somehow I get the feeling it's a female cat. Then she lets out a tenderous meow that leaves us terrified. It sounded more like a lion roaring than a simple cat. The echo of her meow is heard for throughout the forest making it sound more sinister than it should be. It was then that suddenly an inexplicable force hits us three. I fall to the ground and little by little my eyelids close. The fatigue becomes unbearable. I lose consciousness on the ground of the forest without knowing what was going to happen with me. Interlude before, before night falls. Okay. It is a day like any other, so normal that it was almost painful. The only special thing that could be said about it is that it's October 31st. Far were the memories when I was a kid and went out with my friend to ask for sweets from house to house. Just remembering it made me sigh. I feel nostalgic. Some things were better than I was a child. Or at least, it seems like that. It really does, it really does, you know. Childhood was cool, except for school. <laughs> there were some who had good costumes, whether of superheroes or monsters. My friends and I, on the other hand, had to use our imagination. Creativity was our costume, you could say, no matter how funny it could sound. I remember that my mother once painted red my face and told me, you will be the devil. But it seems only she saw it that way. When we went from home to home and said I was the tomato man. <laughs> But those things didn't matter to me since we always had a good time. Huh. If I asked for candy now, even if I had the best costume, I'm sure no one would give me anything. That's how it works, that's how it works, huh? Well, how would I know? There is no Halloween in Poland, basically. But I actually was talking about that before. Not much of, not much of celebration to that, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Except perhaps a scolding for acting like a child when I am 17 years old. Well, I guess... It would be even weirder for me at the age of 24. But anyway, I can't stay in the past. I must live in the present no matter how exciting that might be. Back to reality, we are a group of friends who don't have any plans for today. We are still not old enough to go to a disco. I am. And I doubt guys as us would have any luck in that environment. Well, it's not my kind of environment as well anyway. 
The other option would be to go to a party, meet girls and have fun. I'm up for it. Everything perfect except that nobody has invited us. Oh, for fuck's sake, like always. Not being popular, I hate it. This one, fa disadvantage, disadva God damn it. Advantage. Disadvantages. It's easy war. Whatever. Hey, Axel, let's have a couple matches. What do you uh, say? My friend Steven called my attention by playing with the game console. I actually like the way it's created here. I mean, you know, the desk and and everything else. It looks neat. Shelves, actually, the shelves look great as well here, and everything is nicely kind of organized. I still need to buy shelves. Ah, I have the desk and yet, but. I need shelves for books, for games, and s well, for figurines not yet. I'll use that top shelf of the of the desk, which is really good for that. Anyway, Rush Red. I believe that's what the game is called. A fast and quite complicated fighting game for me. Rush Red. What the fuck is that? Never heard of it, to be honest. I would normally agree to play with him, but for some reason I don't feel like. I don't feel in the mood today. I have no desire to play now. I don't know, Rush Red. Rush Red. Okay, I guess that's not a thing. Game. Okay, there, there's no such thing. So, imagination of developer, okay. Uh, Alright, I play with Disgorgement, I almost feel bad for doing it. Boring! The AI is no rival for me! Steven said with content. That you're playing on normal difficulty does not help your argument. I don't feel like losing, but if you want, you can challenge to Alfred. I said leading the attention to my other friend. Uh, I know how to play that. And as for Tom for adopting for a second. He is sitting behind the PC, but it seems that he isn't doing anything interesting. The screen only shows a lot of text. I think he's in Wikipedia. Hey, don't you have something more fun to do? I ask with discouragement without even thinking about what he was reading. After looks at me surprised. The actual problem of sight is that people are not interested in discovering their history. He's one of the pseudo-intellectuals always looking for any rare information to appear smarter than others. What if it's just that he's interested in that? I think actually of digging a little bit about my past, I mean my family's past, at some point. By the way, when we forget our past mistakes, we are doomed to repeat them. He added later. What are you talking about? This village is small and its story is not interesting at all. Nothing else of the normal has ever happened in it. Alfred laughs more than me after hearing that. Heh, <laughs> your ignorance is worthy of praise. He pauses, filling his chest with pride. The very fact that this small town is there is its full of mysteries. Did you know that 20 years ago, on this day, a man disappeared? So, what about it? Ask about being impressed or even interested in the least. Things like that happen all the time in all places. As I thought, you don't know the history despite living in this very place. Alfred said while adjusting his glass in an arrogant gesture. There is a legend behind the disappearance, that is what I was reading. After listening to him, I look back at the computer screen with curiosity. It's then that I understood that it, is, it was not Wikipedia but some other page. Come on, read this and learn a little. Alfred said in my gas to read what was on the screen. Both him and I moved closer to read it. Town of Abingdon, Oxfordshire Country, 1994. Oh. So. I was already in the living. 
world. <laughs> All right, I came to this town with only four hundred, four thousand helicopters for the mutant investigation. Okay, that's pretty cool. I want to live in a place that has like only that amount of people. But it also needs a powerful internet. <laughs> anyway, truth is that uh, never in my life have I seen something this strange. I won't say your typical detective-ish nonsense that I haven't seen thousands of strange things in my life. I've seen many crimes, yes. Some difficult to solve, but all of them were human. Even if you don't know how they managed to perpetrate the crime, you know that they are people like anyone else. In this case, I don't think I'm able to say the same thing. Truth is that I can't understand what happened. Okay. I was called for the disappearance of a man named Matthew Graham. 23 years. Single. The last time he was seen, he was returning home from a Halloween party. He had drunk alcohol but was still sober. Or at least that's what witnesses said. Anyway, this is not something which can be explained with simple drunkenness. He apparently got lost on the way home and decided to enter the forest called Oakwood. It had rained yesterday, so the ground was wet and muddy. We could easily find his traces, which were leading deep inside the forest. Apparently, he walked for three hours before stopping. I say stop, but the truth is we don't know what happened then. The truck suddenly ended up in a clearing in the forest. And that's all. There was no evidence of struggle. No other trace or piece of clothing on the ground. There was no blood. No more footprints or anything else. The death of his last footprints and the position they were indicated that he was still walking. At no point he stood still. It was as if he had vaporized in the air. With all his clothes in the middle of his walk. Obviously I can't believe such thing, but I can't give another explanation. The only thing I remember is that near the footprints I sensed a faint smell of rot. However, there were no animal corpses nearby. It is ridiculous to think he suddenly started to decay and became earth. In the end, the case was closed in just three days. With no evidence of any kind, we couldn't say anything but that he decided to escape from the village. However, while obviously there was no more to do, I couldn't sleep in peace. Thinking about what could have happened to him took away my sleep. In my mind, I thought all sorts of theories. Well, my theory would be go there a year later and check. Maybe this situation will repeat on 31st of October. Like, maybe everything was a plan developed by Matthew? But in the end, they all seemed impossible. I said to investigate more on the issue. I searched the town for similar stories and to my surprise, I found four more. All young men. The story was always the same. They walked in the forest alone, disappearing without trace. Even more curious is that all of them disappeared on the same date. October 31st. But there's more. A detail that completely eliminates the possibility that there is a killer or kidnapper behind this. And that is the separation of the years. Roger Bacon disappeared in 1924. Mitchell Smith disappeared in 1867. Holy shit, that's a lot of years. 33, uh, 57. That's a lot. Jason Black disappeared in 1813. 50, 30, uh, 54 years. And the worst of all, Oswald Taylor disappeared in 707. I mean, yeah. 1707, right. 1707, okay. 
1707. Holy shit, it's over 100 years. It simply couldn't be possible. My curiosity led me to dig deeper. I thought that the answer were maybe in the past of the forest. It was then when I discovered that what seemed to be a simple and boring forest actually did a great story. Before it was called Oakwood or Oaks Forest, the place was called Wickwood. The word wick has huge similarity with witch. Taking into consideration that it is an old name and language, changes over time, that engaged that it was the forest of witches. That's it! We are searching for some young witches! Because... Young witches are cool. I like them. The old hacks not interested, the young ones, I guess. Alright. Apparently more than 400 years ago, the people of the village believed witches lived in the woods. Unfortunately, almost all the information is already lost. They were stories told in voice. Without a properly written record. I just know that with the change of religion to Christian, people stopped seeing the witches with good eyes and began to hunt them. Yeah, that's how Christianity worked and uh, that's how it also led to deaths of the innocent people. Anyway, apparently the last one before her death cast a curse on the forest which even though today should continue to exist. Nice. Anyway, obviously I cannot accept something like that as the answer. In the end, I have no other choice that, than accepting that each one of them escaped from the village. Using the legends of virus to make it look like it was something supernatural. Hmm, how would they do that for? My first thought would be they somehow returned back by making their steps into the footprints they already made, but I guess that would be noticeable for a detective that someone stepped again into it and he was walking backwards, right? Even if he was actually walking backwards, not, you know, turn around and walk that way, yeah? That would be noticeable for sure, but yeah. Anyway, interesting story. I didn't know that such story was hiding in this town. I said no surprise. Even if it's a lie, it managed to hold my interest. Wait, there's something more. Alfred said at the same time he scrolls to the comments. We read that what is written there. A couple of comments call our attention. Both of them talk about some creature. At that time they felt a horrible fear for what could happen to them. Well, the two comments share great similarities. But they could have been written by the same person. There are many others that deny it. Looks like many people went to the forest because of the legend but couldn't find anything. Huh. I thought that you only read those things to look poor cool before the girls. Replied Steven as a joke. Our giggles fell to shame. Partly, yeah. <laughs> he admitted it. That was a secret everybody suddenly knew. Come on. Well, well, now we have an activity for tonight. Stevens at the, uh, at the same time he makes a face of a point of enthusiasm. But I was completely lost, I thought we were just killing time. Simple, let's go to the forest. Steven replied without hesitation. He seemed really fascinated by this story. Are you insane? Said Alfred, I didn't believe what he just heard. You only need to look at his face to know he did not like the idea. Despite everything you've heard, you want to go? Of course! It's been a test of courage among us three! Replied Steven full of confidence, perhaps too much, he should relax a bit. Don't tell me you are afraid! Uh, I, I know, why should I be afraid? And answered Alfred, at the same time he folds his arms, making a false ge gesture of security. It's more than obvious that you are afraid, Alfred. Almost as much as when you have to talk with a girl! <laughs> And what about you, Alex? Don't tell me you won't come! Suddenly, Steven asked me, at the same time looking at me mockingly. Don't tell me you want to be the chicken of the group! I heard the tone of the voice he used. <laughs> I will never give you that. I said without thinking, showing a confident smile and look. I mean, in the end, we will be dating a witch. Young witch, hopefully. 
Because if it would be a lot hack, I'd rather be eaten there. <laughs> anyway, well, let's not say more. Take your crowns, backpacks, flashlights, and some wool. We are going to the forest. Steven said, full of energy. Yeah! We three sat in unison as if we are going to have some kind of private party. Not really knowing what we are doing or what we were going to find. 13 minutes past 2 a.m. Here we are again. Our way, completely confused, not knowing how much time had passed. I know. My head hurts like hell, but I can't blame it. Fortunately, the pain goes way quickly just as my confusion. Soon I come back to my senses. My flashlight is lying on the ground, shining towards the empty air. I immediately pick it up. It was my only protection against the darkness that surrounds me. Then I remember that Steve and Alfred were with me. Steven! Alfred! Can you hear me? Well, I think I scream their names in the dark while trying to find them with my flashlight, but there is no trace of them. They are gone. Where the hell are they? And what the heck just happened? I really don't understand anything. Shit, we should have stayed at home. This is not a proof of courage. We could be in danger. I have to find them. I think. 19 minutes past 2 a.m. So like 6 minutes later if I remember correctly. Little time had pa has passed since I started to look for my friends and I already can't stand this place. I'm going crazy in the forest. The darkness that covers it is unnatural. It is a darkness that seals your own sanity, replacing it with anxiety. To make it worse, the air is damp and cold as winter. In winter, carrying a strong rot smell. As if there were corpses of animals hidden throughout the forest. Well, there might be. The atmosphere in this place is oppressive. With every step you take, it makes you more uncomfortable. Since I started to look for my friends, I felt that something is watching me, but there is nothing. I sigh with my voice full of frustration. I just want to get out of here. I continue walking devoid of any hope. No matter where I look or how much I walk, I find nothing. I cannot even hear the sounds of animals. Rather, it seems they are already dead or rotting. Now I have to calm myself. I said to myself. I stopped for a moment to rest. You've been walking for six minutes, man. What are you resting of? You are not even tired of anything. You basically took a nap a second ago as well. Anyway, I breathe deeply, but the rotten air of this place does me no good. Even though I start to cough as if I get something stuck in the throat. Shit, shit, shit! What am I going to do? This curse for it seems endless. And if I, by, mir by miracle I could escape, I cannot abandon Simon and Alfred. Eh, yes you can. <laughs> I'm really screwed up. Again I sigh, feeling on the verge of tears. My frustration is building up, but I have to do my best to keep calm. If I fall to despair, then there is no doubt I will be joining the list of missing persons. Missing people. Uh, anyway, I remember how you can actually kind of find a way no a way out of the forest or something like that you just need to look at the greenery and so on anyway uh, or no that is the way to find the, the the north or south whatever anyway whatever never mind I haven't been in the forest for forever as well, anyway. In the end, I decided to keep walking. Step by step, I should get somewhere. At least I was convinced that staying in the same place would not do me any good. Even if it was only to deceive myself feeling that I am doing something, I want to continue walking. Time passes without any changes. Only sound my footsteps can be heard. Knowing that as soon as you stop, you will be surrounded by dead silence is a good incentive to keep walking. But my legs were already hurting. Suddenly I hear a crack at my feet. Instant take a step back and look below to see what made that sound. I don't know, a, a freaking... Uh, branch? What is this? I was to myself surprised going that I had stepped on animal bone. I believe that it's from an animal, although I do not rule out the possibility that it belongs to a person. 
But for my own good, I prefer not to think about that. An expression of anguish is drawn my face. It is best to ignore it, I have to keep walking. Suddenly my flashlight reveals something. Rod is stationed and point towards there again. Only to rise with this surprise that it is the way a white cat. The one from before which made that awful meow, but this time I find it lying on the ground. It appears to be fainted that he is wounded. When what I should what should I do? Ignore the cat or pick the cat. Save the game! <laughs> right, uh, it might be risky, but let's go and take the cat. It is best to continue without. Wait, wait, wait what did I choose? That cat is dangerous, it's terrible there. What? But even knowing that, for some strange reason, I can't help but feel sorry for her. Okay. You got me scared there that I choose to not pick her up even though I wanted to pick her up. Even if it's unnatural, it is still an animal. I then bend down to see her closer. She is unconscious and there is a thin line of blood coming from her mouth. I'm a real idiot. I see myself at the same time I clean the blood from her mouth with a handkerchief that I had with me. Fortunately she doesn't wake she does wake up. I then close her mouth, making her appearance a little better. Now she seems to be peacefully sleeping. Huh. Interesting. After a long sight, I decided to pick her up carefully. I don't know what the powers of this cat are, but if she brought me here, maybe she can return me to my world? With her in my arms, I decided that the best thing I can do is continue walking. Huh. 31 minutes past 2 a.m. Or 29 minutes to 3 a.m. Anyway. So that's like what? 8 minutes? I don't even remember the time in the game anymore. Again I find myself in the dark forest walking aimlessly. Only moving forward but it didn't seem I was getting somewhere. In my arms I carry the cat which sleeps soundly. Come here, <laughs> here you'll be safe. I suddenly stop. I was probably easy to see that beef on my face at that moment. It's that voice again. I whispered myself with no one to listen to me. Shortly after I found the cat, Mr's voice appeared in my mind. It is a feminine voice, soft and gentle, as if it belonged to a princess from a fairy tale, but I can't trust it. Am I really going crazy, or is it this forest that does make any sense? I don't know, but I don't like any of the two options. <laughs> I then feel the cat move in my arms. I look down at her confused, just to see how she opens her red eyes suddenly. I become quiet at that instant. For a moment the two stayed motionless, staring into the eyes of the other. The red eyes of the cat are disturbing to me, but also there is something fascinating about them, something that attracts me. Dude, that's disgusting what you are saying now. I lose myself in her eyes as if hypnotized. That's even more disgusting. Until Sandy jumps with the intention of scratching my face. My reflex pushing her at the same time I jump, jump back, turning my head to dodge her claws. I managed to dodge her attack, but in the process I dropped my flashlight. Good job. I panic and act there clumsily. The flashlight falls near me, lighting up the tree in the vicinity. As soon as it left my hands, I remember how dense this abnormal darkness is. I could pick it up, not even thinking before taking action. I then light the place where the cat was. Yo, on discover she had arched her body angry as if she feared an attack from me. Those red eyes turned me. Shining with the light of the flashlight as if they were jewels reflecting fearsome hatred and rejection towards me. My body freezes after seeing them, I can't even think. Oh, for fuck's sake, again. The cat then lets out a tender smell, similar to the one before but weaker. Although not any less frightening. There is no doubt there is something wrong with the animal, it must be cursed. Everything is her fault, she must be some kind of evil spirit, a pet of the witches. I feel how panic seizes me. My heart beats quickly, begging me to do something. 
My mouth is dry and my forehead covered with cold sweat. What should I do? You should... Save the game. Escape from the cat or confront the cat. I feel like escaping wouldn't help at all. I mean, you would still be in the forest. What if that cat actually... What if... Okay. What if... Escaping means disappearing and confronting dozens. For what if both options mean disappearing? Or what if escaping doesn't mean... Ah, Let's go confront the cat, whatever. Let's do it. I'm no afraid of cats. I'm a lynx. I'm from the family of cats as well, right? Boom! No, I should not despair. I have to calm down and think carefully about what I should do. With that, you might take a brief deep and look again at her. Soon the expert in my eyes changes from fear to courage. I realize it is only a cat who got up a stranger, but my life is not actually in danger. Unless it somehow is capable of scratching you in the neck and cutting that very important place that can you get you dead. That isn't the tiger staring at me, but a simple cat. Apparently her only power are those weird meows. If she could kill me, she would have already done it. Or she's just fighting with you. So I ruled out that possibility. Her work must be transporting the next victim to this area of the forest, so unnatural and shady. After filling my lung with her, I still walk towards the cat. Yo, her meows get loud with every step, but I don't let them scare me. Seeing that, I do not turn back, she shyly takes a step back. back. In my mind, I smile at that image. They praise now the hunter. I look at her directly while dancing. Little by little, her move, meows become weaker, as if she was losing strength. Then I suddenly jump and take her in my hand. She hardly resists at all. Not so tough, huh? Right? You look better like this. She's trembling in my hands. And she looks so helpless that I almost feel like a villain. But I must not forget all that she has done so far. It's her fault that I'm in this place. Well, technically, it's not like she told you to go to the forest. She brought me here. Then if I kill her, would it be possible to go back? Don't you even dare do that. For a moment that grim idea crossed my mind. I never killed an animal, but the truth is that I can be proud of myself in doing such a thing. Even a mosquito? I mean, I guess mosquito could technically be called an animal. <laughs> but if I do, maybe this legend could end here and now. Then what should I do? Just keep her captured, kill her. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't kill a cat. Come, keep her captured. It says only logical the magic should die along with the cat. That should be my ticket back. If I kill her, everything would be over tonight and the legend would come to an end. Content it was for the best, I tried to view it in my mind. But no matter how hard I force myself to see it, in the end I managed to get a life of an unreal being. being. Even if it is a cursed cancer being witch, I don't feel good killing her. Yeah! Because what if the witch is hot and young? I mean, not too young, but like 18 plus and under 30. <laughs> anyway, I think it's I'm too nice for my own good. So the only thing that remains is to keep her with me, hoping that sooner or later she allows me to escape. With nothing more to think about, I decide the best thing to do is to continue my path. Here's the cut. 31 minutes past 2 a.m. 10 minutes later, I think. It's been a few minutes since I captured the cat. Again, I find myself walking with her in my arms, led by the strange voice. How long have I been walking this forest? Apparently not enough to make me go mad, but it should be close. Don't be afraid. Come with me. I will help you. The voice sounds closer this time, it seems that I'm going in the right direction. I don't fully trust him, but it's the best I have. 
At least at first glance it seems a friendly voice. I am completely focused on my way when I suddenly feel something bite me. Ah, what the heck? I shout in pain resident they can't beat my arm. Fortunately it wasn't a dangerous bite, but it sure was painful. With my destruction she takes the chance to jump from my arms, falling a few steps away from me. Really I set my gaze among her furious, but soon something happens that makes me forget about my anger. Suddenly the cat is covered with a bright light. So much that it repels the unnatural darkness surrounding the forest, stealing my breath. Then their light, its figure, gradually changes until it kisses to be a cat and becomes a human figure. What? Hello there! No longer is there a cat in front of me, but a girl with incredible beauty. I've done a good thing by not going to that forest. I must really be going crazy. She has white hair and red eyes. She seems about my age. In all circumstances, I would have asked her around without hesitation. Hey, wanna go on a date? <laughs> Just think about makes me laugh to myself in my mind. Even at the age of the madness, it seems some things about me will never change. She approaches slowly towards me, one step at a time, with no fear. The girl then stares into my eyes, with a slightly irritated face. Her lips are moving, she seems to be saying something, but I'm unable to hear a sound. Are you trying to tell me something? A bubble silk views, with face of disbelief, which surely made me look stupid. Said the girl, with a very low voice. I do not understand what she's saying. What? I can't hear you well. I was still confused. Sandy girl pouts in a bad mood. What's wrong with you? Are you deaf? Finally I could hear her clearly. And just in time, because it seems her patience was about to end. Okay, okay, now I heard you. I said annoyed. Not true. All of my astonishment from just a few seconds ago disappears when I see the arrogant attitude of the girl. At least now I don't think she will bite me, I hope. The girl then snorts with irritation. <laughs> what an annoying guy I had to find! She said at the time she, she, time she placed a hand on her lips, making a pensive face. Wait. You shouldn't speak of ill of someone who have right before you. I was quick to respond. For a moment I feel annoyed at the thought that I have to teach her to the spirit or whatever she is. I pity so much beauty wasted someone so arrogant. See, honestly, I don't see anything arrogant so far in her, but okay. The girl let out a snort of annoyance after hearing me. Huh. I'm sorry, it's a bad habit that I can't quit. She answered without sounding very repentant, clearly a false apology. After talking, she diverts her gaze towards the surroundings, as if she was bored. I see. I replied annoyed, I just met her and I already feel I don't like her. What? That's a lie! But anyway, that does matter, I must not forget who this girl is. She was the cat that started it all. Anyway, at least could you tell me why you attacked me and my friends? I asked shortly after, acting more seriously. The greetings were over, it's time to get to the important stuff. And why did you bite me if I wasn't doing anything? <laughs> Before I knew it, my lips moved as asking another question. I can't lie, I was angry. The girl then stares at my face. She blinks curtsy before speaking. Does it hurt? The wound? She asked innocently. Yes? I was quick to respond with annoyance, I didn't need to say more. Of course it hurts me, silly cat. She looks at me in silence for a few seconds until suddenly she approaches me without any shyness or fear. One second thought, how could a simple human such as me scare a cat that can turn into a person? Show me your wood, said the girl once she stood right next to me. Her presence makes me nervous, this girl seemed to not know what personal space is, and not that I would mind that. As embarrassing as it sounds, I had never had a girl this close. Well, good for you, I guess, if only it wasn't in this forest. Well. Okay, I never had a girl like this close in the forest, that's for sure. I don't know why, I shouldn't trust her, but strangely something tells me that she had, has no bad intentions. The girl is surrounded by calm aura, something pure unlike anything else in the forest. In the end, resigning myself to a sigh, I show her my arm with the bite. I immediately the girl has her sight on my wound. It will only take a moment. 
she said with complete confidence. Then she looks up into my eyes. Up. Could you close your eyes? She asks as she blushes slightly. I'm surprised to see that Amber's face she has, even if just a little. Then I sighed feeling something wasn't right, but there is nothing else I can do. Okay. I sat doing as she asked. I didn't know what to expect. For a moment I thought she would get naked or something like that. What? Why would you think that? I only thought she might actually somehow kiss the wound and that way it would be solved, something like that, maybe. But what kind of magic can work only when you have no clothes? <laughs> okay, I don't know, but my mind sure wanted to imagine that. Come on, Axel, keep your composure. Suddenly I feel something warm and wet touch my wound. Immediately I shudder. Wait, what are you doing? It's a question because I knew well what she was doing. She was licking my wound. You idiot! Who said you could watch? It was quick to respond, the cat. With her cheeks red the embarrassment and her lips still close my wound, she looked utterly troubled. Don't you see that I'm just trying to heal you? She then added in a bad mood. I sorry. I said blushing. Uh, I thought you would do something more extraordinary. No, I'm not sure. Now I'm not sure. Is she a girl who can transform the cat or a cat that can become a girl? Sorts upon you not being extraordinary enough! Murmured the girl at the same time she gives me an annoyed look. Red eyes shining with disgust. It is then that I realized that the pain has disappeared. With curiosity, I look where the wound was only to discover it now, there is no trace of it. For a couple of seconds I stay silent, incredulous. It seems that your treatment worked. I finally said grateful to looking at the spot. <laughs> but of course, I have experience healing myself. Answered the girl, closing her eyes and inflating her chest to show her pride. I actually appreciate what she did, but I still wonder if she really had to lick it to cure me. I understand, but who are you? The girl makes a small snort with curiosity after hearing my question. Then she drops her head and closes her eyes, making a thoughtful face. It seems I have not presented myself. She opens her eyes and gazes into mine. My name is Ashley. So that's her name. I expected something more extravagant. And my name is Axel. Axel Foley. <laughs> not true. By the way, have you ever been accused of witchcraft? Before I knew it, I asked a question. I guess it was rather rude for me, completely lacking manners, but I must not forget for even a second that I am in this course first. Ashley, Ashley suddenly becomes silent, at plain sight it was obvious she didn't take it well. She takes her time before responding. Yes, but that was long time ago. Then she closed her eyes and exhales emptying her lungs. She seemed to be recalling something painful, just seeing her made me feel guilty. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it was not my intention to make you remember it. I said slightly remorseful, no doubt to be accused of witchcraft mask have been a horrible experience. Ah, Ashley closed her eyes and nods a couple of times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's okay, it's not like I can blame your curiosity think where we are. Then she looks at me close with curious eyes. By the way, how do you know about me? Perhaps you are a sorcerer who has lived during these past centuries. That would be cool, wouldn't it? She asks, narrowing her eyes as if she was trying to see the inside of my mind. What kind of question is that? No, no, nothing like that. I swear at that moment. I'm just an ordinary person. I almost did boring, but she didn't need to know that. It's just that there are stories about witches in this forest. But as you can see, the stories are not very convincing or else I wouldn't be here. I explained trying to remove any doubt that Ashley may have. Again, she closed her eyes and nods. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I understand. She pauses and looks me in the eyes. It's because of those stupid myths that stupid ones come to this forest just like you. She then said, looking at me with rejection. Wait, what are you trying to say? We are to blame? 
I replied, feeling offended. Ashley suddenly looks at me disgusted. Are you an idiot? Yes, if you hadn't gone, my existence would be nice and peaceful, instead of this chaos that it is very every year. She's an angry with a sigh of frustration. But you're really the one who causes all of this? I was quick to respond. I'd never bother to hide my anger. I can't believe what she says, how arrogant can she be? Ashley opens her eyes wide surprised, then she looks at me with annoyance in her red eyes. Do you not understand? Stupid human. Definitely I don't like this girl. I do. And I'm only trying to protect you. Her words take me by surprise. Heh? I exclaimed incredulously. You attack me and attack my friends, only to protect us? Yes! She simply replied, at the same time she nods filled with pride and confidence. Okay, that's it, I'm getting out here. I can't believe how arrogant and self-centered this girl is. After everything she did to me and my friends, I can't stand her any longer. Wait! I had only taken a few steps when I heard her calling me. She sounds really worried. You don't, you don't understand the real danger you are in here. I stop in my tracks as soon as I hear her. Real danger? I was feeling some doubts. Suddenly she shiver, it does look like she's lying. Yeah, I tried to chase them away using illusions. Other times I hit them with my powers. And as a last resort I scared them directly as if it was in your case. Ashley confessed, blushing as if she felt embarrassed or remembering. And why do you do that? I was confused, something isn't right here. Ashley stares me with her red eyes. <sighs> if they continue with their curiosity, they will meet an evil entity that will take their lives. What you say doesn't sound very convincing. I immediately interrupted. The only evil entity here is you? Ouch. I would not have said that. Ashley takes her head in denial. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You are wrong. I'm the good one. Then she said, looking into my eyes with a pure innocence in her. <laughs> what? I could only laugh at the comment. It had to be a joke. After all that you say, you're good. Okay, sometimes you have to do, do bad to, to, in the end, it's ter to turn out good, right? Or something like that. Don't laugh, I'm trying to protect you! Replied Ashley Furious while waving her arms. She then crosses her arms and gives me an unpleasant look. Unpleased look. Expect me to believe that. I replied sarcastically. What she said made no sense, but somehow she seemed only convinced that it was the truth. She was surely a bit wrong in the head. But it's true! You have to believe me! This time she sounds really worried about me. I actually feel a little sorry for her. Ashley then stays silent, looking at me with puppy eyes. However, she soon recovers her proud attitude. If you want, hold my hand. I won't harm you. She suddenly says. I look carefully at her. She has a very arrogant face, as if it was a great honor to be able to touch her. You won't do anything strange. Ask distrustful, but after seeing her again, I do not think she was lying. Ashley, uh, not full of confidence. Huh, I promise you. I stare at her for a few seconds, making sure that isn't a trap. Okay, but why do you want me to hold your hand? I ask at the same time I extend my hand. Ashley opens her eyes, surprised after hearing my question, then she stares at me with annoyance. Are you stupid? Obviously to guide you out of the forest! She said just as she takes my hand in one quick move. I didn't find myself being dragged by this strange girl. But this is the opposite way from where the melodious voice comes. I said look back for a second. I felt really curious about who she was. Huh, you ignored that voice. It's charms meant to make them her victims. Think of it as a siren. Ashley explained in bad mood, with her eyes always looking to the front. It seemed she didn't get along well with whoever that person or entity was. Wouldn't you be the one who collects souls of fools? I asked without thinking. 
I seriously need more experience when dealing with a girl. <laughs> Such ridiculous tanks in this game. If only I were more popular. <laughs> okay. I would agree with myself and that as well. <laughs> Ashley stops suddenly. She then turns at me showing me a furry's face. You idiot! I already said I'm the good one! And I would date you. Totally. For a moment I thought she was going to hit me on the head. But unfortunately she stopped before doing so or biting me again. Okay. 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 I make it respond as if I were scolded child. But if you are... If you eat me, I will make sure to give you the worst indi indigestion in your life. You idiot! I don't eat humans! Replied Ashley ending with an arrogant snort. 11 minutes past 3 am. Several minutes had passed since I started to walk hand in hand with Ashley. At the beginning I did not trust her at all, but the more time passed the easier it was to believe her. I had noted before how comfortable her hand is, soft and pleasant to the touch. I blushed just thinking about it, even if she's a witch she's a girl too, right? Then I sighed. Come on Axel, composure, composure. With every step the curse of the forest seemed to weaken. The atmosphere was less oppressive every minute until finally I was able to forget about that unpleasant feeling. Before I noticed, the darkness had returned to normal, feeling only empty. The rotten smell also had disappeared without a trace. Now I could really say I was in a common and ordinary forest, even boring. But I could not be more grateful for that. Just more to get out, so let's keep moving. Then I set my sight on the back of Ashley watching her walk in silence. She was completely focused on that simple thing. Anyone else actually curious about the other guys? What happened to them and so on? Okay, if you are the witch from the legend, why are you helping me? I still asked you, not thinking twice before it. I was really intrigued by that. Our Ashley stops and turns to get me with an angry face. Huh, idiot, do you... Do you really think that all the witches are evil? I knew it! I knew it! I knew that they were not all evil, and not all of them were old hawks. <laughs> yes. I knew it. She was right, that general image of which is no good, but it's not as if the stereotypes with were truthful. Then she closed her eyes making an annoyed face. Hmm. It's true that I had supernatural parts, but I never used them to do harm. As she lowered her sight and paused, suddenly she looked sad. My only sin was to be born in time of the witch hunts. That's why I was condemned. That explains well. I feel that I can trust she is good. But there is still one more question. How old are you? Right? That will be the question. Oh, why not? And how did you end up becoming a cat? Ashley immediately blushes. She was so embarrassed that it was almost adorable, almost. Well, before my execution there was a cat watching in the distance. So I decided to transfer my soul to it. She explained, avoiding looking in my eyes. Of course we now share the body we have like a deal. The cat will be happy as long as it has something to eat and a place to sleep. I try to provide her with all those needs, and she trash lets me stay in her body. As she talks, she is blushing shyly. I see, I think it's a fair deal, I guess. <laughs> I reply with a sincere smile. The truth is that I found it a little funny. It turns out that she's both a girl and a cat, that answers some questions. Ashley closes her eyes and nods a couple of times. When she wants to, she can be very cute. Too bad that happens so rarely. Okay, so... You know her for like, what? 30 minutes maximum. And... You complain that her being cute 
rarely in f just 30 minutes is a bad thing. That just stupid <laughs> thinking. Stupid thinking. Okay, not saying more. Ashley continues walking to the exit. I think she's cute. This time I stay in silence. All that remains for me is to escape from this place. 15 minutes past 3 a.m. Well, here we are! Ashley said just a few minutes after we talked. She isn't lying, I can see the end of the forest in the distance. I had to contain my desire to scream with joy at that moment. There must be two other humans close here, your friends. Go with them and return home, I hope that nobody else comes tonight. Ashley said give me a subtle farewell, but strangely she does not let go of my hand. She looks deep into my eyes. Amazed and the gentleness that reflects on them. Can you make me a promise? She suddenly said with another voice, it was no joke. What is it? I asked full of curiosity. I don't know what I could do for a witch, but after helping me to escape, I think that she deserves me to her hear her request. And this legend! She then murmured with an air of sadness. I can't understand why she asked for something like this. I want to help me to keep people away. The legend only attracts more people, as in your case. I need to kill it, replacing the supernatural danger with a human danger. A human danger. So you want to scare them with ordinary dangers, as thieves or ferocious animals. On second thought, there is logic in what you ask. If you remove the amount of magic and only leave the danger, then exploring the forest is not worth the risk. Ashley nods, and then looked into my eyes, blushing. Yes, exactly, she said pleased. Okay, I'll do it. You can rely on me, I think. I respond with the determination. I wanted her, ha I wanted her know how serious I was, that it was not a promise I would forget as soon as I got out of the forest. Thank you. Then she closed her eyes momentarily and flayed her chest with pride. You aren't as stupid as I thought. I should have expected something like that. Hey, I told you not to talk ill of someone when they, they are in front of you. I complained angrily. This cat, I mean this girl, simply will never change. After seeing my reaction, I actually cannot help but laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the first time I've seen her so happy. That made me blush. I should look unexpectedly adorable at the moment. My heart was nervously beating as if I was with a normal girl. I mean, she's a normal girl. Suddenly she stares at me and gets so close her face is less than an inch from mine. <laughs> Again, she demonstrates not knowing what personal space is. Not that I mind. But this time I don't know whether to be angry or thankful. Thankful? Having her so close, a beautiful girl makes me very nervous. This is the farewell. We'll see about that! I might end this legend, but that doesn't mean I will not come to the forest every single night! <laughs> she suddenly said. She then brings her lips to my cheek and gives me a tender kiss. Everything becomes white at that moment. Everything loses its color, everything is gone. Everything. Everything! 18 minutes past 3 a.m. Ah. I'm outside of the forest. I have no idea of how I made it here, but this is no illusion. I am bewildered as if I had been sleepwalking. Axel! Axel! Sonic like hears someone calling my name, but it's not any strange voice. It's the voice of my friends who are looking for me. Hey, over here! I shout about a second of hesitation with a bit of clumsiness because of my confusion. Soon they found me and impatiently ran towards me. Where were you? The world was killing us! Steven said with a face that I don't remember having ever seen before. Before answering, I rubbed my forehead. Within the forest, I couldn't find the exit. Alfred was about to say something, but before that, I interrupted him. Anyway, it doesn't matter, I was just lost. The important thing is that we are all safe. Yeah, you're right. 
Hey, don't you feel that we are forgetting something? Alfred murmured at the same time he lowers his side pensive. Suddenly a blurry image appears in my mind. It was white and bright, but I can't remember more. However, that weak memory awakes a strange feeling of nostalgia in me. It was as if I had lost something, but what could it be? Anyway, we should go home, I bet. Yeah, this guy has gone too far for a test of courage. I said with no intention of spending one more minute in the forest. They both agree with me. With nothing else to say, we can only return home. By the way, guys, we should write on the page to not go to the forest. Forget about the witches, somebody might get lost there as it happened to me. It was a miracle that I came out alive with the beast lurking around. Before knowing it, my lips move. Why did I say that? I had no idea, but something inside inspired me to do so. To goodness, I have no memory of the beast I speak of. All I can remember is that it has red eyes and white fur, but nothing more. Then I remember something. I think it was a promise I made to... Wait, to whom had I made that promise? I think about it for a moment inside, but in the end I can't remember a thing. That means it's time to re return to the forest. No matter all I know is that I go out and I'll never come back here again. Why? What? That's it? What? Okay, is that really it? it? Alright, I'm not, I'm not sure. Did I really finish it already? Alright, well, I guess that would be it. But I think there is more to the game. So, tomorrow we shall continue this. Because the achievements were saying uh, some different endings and so on. So, yeah, we'll see how this will go. Uh, for now, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.